Hi, it's George Cow, and I'm really happy to be here with Eric Bensusson. He is a transformational relationship coach, and we're going to have a great conversation today about how our relationship with ourselves is the most important relationship that we have. Eric, thanks for being here. Well, thank you for having me. It's yeah, always thanks. nice to chat with you. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this. So let me first uh, share your bio with the audience, and then we'll get into this conversation about transformational uh, relationships. Okay, so Eric's passion is understanding how relationships work from a psychological, emotional, spiritual, and even scientific point of view, and then using that knowledge to help people. His own experience with rela relationships has blessed him with some of his life's greatest lessons and caused him to look beyond his circumstances to unravel his true personality and then choose to powerfully live the life that he wants. Eric works with individuals as well as couples as a transformational relationship coach. And the core of his work is the relationship you have with yourself sets the tone for every other relationship that you have. And I will be sure to put uh, the links to Eric's website. And um, he's also active on Instagram and Facebook. And I'll put those links in the notes of the video. So be sure to check out uh, his content. It's some great stuff. So Eric, um, there's, you know, this is a rich conversation that we could spend hours on, <laughs> but um, well, I'll just, you know, I'd love for you to share some tips and some wisdom uh, from your own experiences. And you've coached a lot of people over the years. Oh, and I should also mention that you are one of the members of my Master Heart Group coaching program. So it's really great to have you as part of that. Um, so uh, one of the topics that you like to talk about is creating awareness about our own life experiences. So what, is, what does that mean? Yeah, absolutely. So here's the thing. The core of my work, as you said, is the relationship you have with yourself will set the tone with every other relationship you have. Yeah. To, to summarize that is the way you feel about yourself creates your life experience. So if I think that I'm not good enough or if I think that I'm uh, not worthy of love, this is what I'm going to attract and this is what I'm going to create in my own experience because my thoughts and my behavior will match that belief. So creating awareness is to be really honest with yourself and to be able to recognize when um, whatever you do in your life and whatever you experience in your relationship is your responsibility. Because most of the time what we do is we get into a relationship, right? Whether it's with a, a, a romantic partner or a parent or a friend or a coworker, right? And when something goes off or when something goes wrong, we start to blame the other person. Oh, but he did that. He doesn't know me, blah, 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 blah. You know, this internal dialogue that we can have with ourselves sometimes. But the thing is, if you step back from that and say, okay, this is how I feel in this moment and this is what my experience is, okay? Doesn't mean that's who I am, but this is just my experience. So when I have a, this conversation with my wife, for example, around the, the dishes, for example, okay? I get triggered, I get upset. So instead of blaming her, is to be aware that if in this moment I'm triggered, it's because I'm already triggered. It has nothing to do with the situation that I, have, that I am in or the conversation that I have with my wife. So it means that the trigger exists within myself and it's almost like my, my, my wife, by, by saying whatever she wants to say, push a button and I go back to my past, to an emotional wounds that I have. And, and, and in that moment, I'm reacting. So creating awareness is making the difference and being aware when I'm reacting and when I'm responding. So whenever you have a gut feeling and you want to say something when someone, when, when you're in a situation, that's reacting, okay? So when I react, creating awareness is catching yourself and saying, hey, right now I feel triggered, I feel I'm upset, or I notice that I'm getting angry right now, but this is about me. So if I take responsibility about that, I can just slow down, I can let my partner know about that, and I can say, you know, Whatever happens here, this is how I feel. And then step back and take the time that I need in order to answer, or in order to respond. And most, yeah, go on. No, I was, this is great. And so, I mean, I can think about my own situations, yeah. you know, with my wife. And so 
when you say that the trigger already exists, you're saying that because of a past negative experience we had, it created this pattern maybe it created this template yeah. for okay in the future if this kind of thing happens again you should react negatively is that something like that yeah absolutely it's about patterns it's about belief but mm -hmm. it's also about uh wounds that we have okay yeah. so as we grew up whether we have the best parents or the worst parents in the world we're gonna have trauma because as a kid and even as an adult we are uh, making meaning machine something happened and we make it mean something. That's how the brain works. It's just the way it is. So for example, very quickly, uh, I'm a six years old uh, boy. I come home very excited. And I said to my mother, hey mom, there is uh, something happening at school. I really want you to come because there are other parents coming. Would you be able to come Friday at 10 a.m. in the morning? And my mother will say, hey, you're, that's very nice. But you know, I need to work and I can't do that and I can't take a day off for that. What's happening is that as, as a six years old, I'm gonna make it mean something. Maybe I'm gonna make it mean, oh, why other parents come and my mother doesn't come? Maybe my mother doesn't uh, care about me. Maybe my mother doesn't love me enough to show up. And from those meanings that we make as a, as a child, then we're gonna make decisions. And then we're gonna carry those decisions, so maybe, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to withdraw some, some, or I'm going to be, some, some other kids would be uh, resentful. But if I withdraw, for example, I would never ask again someone to do something for me, especially my parents. And then I carried that decision with me all my life. And you can see uh, how irrelevant it is as you are an adult to carry those kind of decisions that you took when you were six years old based on a meaning that has nothing to do with reality. Does it make sense to you? Yeah, absolutely. This is, this is hard work, right? Because <laughs> it is about, and, but it's very, well, it's about living consciously. And yes. it's the kind of work that turns us truly, helps us mature into, into adults rather than like little immature kids walking around in adult bodies, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, but, but here's the thing. Here's the, the opportunity and here's the choice that we have. Let's say I'm in a relationship, okay, and I'm getting triggered by something. The minute I can recognize, oh, it's about me, I'm responsible for my trigger and how I feel, nobody can make me feel bad. If I feel bad, it's about me. I have an opportunity here, okay? I can recognize what's the thought behind that, what's the patterns that did it happen before with other of my partners? Did it happen in, in other circumstances of my life? It's really about being honest with yourself and taking responsibility. And the minute you start taking responsibility, you start to transform the relationship you have with yourself. Of course, I don't say it's gonna happen overnight, right? It's, um, it's a, a practice that you have to, to keep going, keep going, keep going. And of course, when you get triggered or when you get like uh, emotional or you want to react, it's very important to detach yourself from how you feel. Okay, so two things. How you feel is always valid, okay? That's, that's, that's a statement you have to do. Then the second thing is, it's not because I feel sad or I feel angry that I'm someone bad or that I'm someone that can deal with relationship. I don't have to identify myself with how I feel in the moment. So if I don't identify with the trigger in that moment, I can step back and, and be honest and say, hey, what's behind that trigger? What, what, what's really, what's the truth behind that? And what's the most important, and I would say that to anyone, it's not to find immediate answers because you won't find immediate answers, but it's to change the inner dialogue that you have with yourself. Instead of blaming, instead of judging yourself or judging others, just start by saying, if I'm getting triggered right now, if there is a resistance that I feel right now in my, in my, in my body, there is a truth behind that. Hmm. And if I sit down and I say, what's the truth behind that? And if I'm being really honest, I, li I like that sentence. You can tell yourself, if I'm being really honest, what's the truth behind that? 
And the most important, I want to emphasize that, it's not to find immediate answer, it's to change the inner dialogue that you have with yourself. And over time, of course, the more you trust that, the more work you do based on that, then you will be able to have some answers coming from your own inner guidance. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's great. And of course, it's helpful if, if, if the person can have a third party like yourself to, to talk with about you know, what's coming up and, and things like that. So um, how do you know, this, is, this, this question mm, may be too, too long to discuss right now, but I'm curious, how do you know if, let's say your spouse is doing something that you don't think is the right thing to do, whether it is a trigger <clears throat> or whether he or she should really change. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> is it, <clears throat> how do I know if it's, if it's, if it's my own, you know, if I'm too clean or, you know, something happened to me in the past where it's like, Oh, I don't have to be so clean yeah. or she really should clean the dishes better, you know? And so you see what I mean? It's like, how yeah, do we judge that? Yeah. You, you already answered the question. <laughs> <laughs> so let me, let me point how you answer the question. Yes. Yeah. You mentioned the other person should change or the other person right. should do something. And the minute you say should, it's a judgment. So uh -huh. all you have to do in those moments yeah. is to be honest and saying, hey, here's my experience right now. Because yeah. you can blame others. You're right. only responsible for how you're experiencing. So if you say to your wife, hey, honey, I want to share something really important for me. And here is my experience of this situation that we are in right now. My experience is I'm getting triggered, I'm getting upset, and I'm starting to have the story in my head that you have to change, that you have to do the dishes, that you have to do that. And I want, I, at the same time, I want to honor how I feel, but I also want to acknowledge the stories that I have in my head. And all you have to do in those moments is to share your experience. So being vulnerable enough with your partner to share your experience. And your partner has nothing to say about that. Your partner has just to acknowledge your experience because guess what? Your experience and her experience is totally different, two different worlds. So it's very difficult to get what the experience of the other is. But what we can do is hold a space for each other to say, hey, I'm sorry you feel that way. Or I'm sorry you have this experience right now. How can I support you? Do you need some time for yourself? Do you want to go for a walk and then maybe we can talk later? Something like that. And that's how, it's, it, it's what I call being in a conversation, being in a honest conversation. I'm feeling vulnerable. I'm feeling upset. I'm just sharing with my partner how I feel about that. And I share my experience. So it's my point of view. There is no blame about her. There is no judgment about the other person. And I think it makes a lot of difference if you can start shifting the conversation with your partner around all of that. That's great. Does it make sense to you? Yeah, yeah, it does. And, and, and what I think what I like about this is that um, making it more open uh, and vulnerable like that helps with the relationship, closeness, you know, the yeah, intimacy. Abs the, the Absolutely. Of, because, um, yeah. Yeah, when you're able to be vulnerable like that, you know, yeah. because nobody wants... I mean, I don't feel comfortable saying that to my partner, whatever she says to me, that I feel angry or that I feel resentful mm. or that I feel, I don't feel comfortable with that because I, I, I don't want to feel that way, right? But if I'm honest with myself, this is how I feel. And if how I feel is okay, I can just be vulnerable in that moment and say, hey, this is how I feel right now. And this is important for me to share that with you. And actually, I, I'm just going to diverse because we are two men having a conversation. And a lot of women will, will listen to that conversation. That's what the women expect from men. They expect us to be vulnerable. And once we get to that point where we are vulnerable, they are more connected with us, more connected with, with our masculinity and their femininity. Because then there is nothing to fix about, but they can nurture something that you don't have within yourself. And, and I think the, the, the feminine energy is to nurture that. Mm -hmm. And as the opposite, as a man, when a woman says something to us, this is how I feel, this is my experience. 
we go into the fixer mind. I need to fix something. I need to do something about it. So as men, if we can stop doing that and say, oh, okay, I didn't know you were having this experience. And wow, just listen. That's what we, we can, that's one of the best things we can do because then the other person, in, in, in this case, woman, they feel heard. They feel a knowledge for how they feel, right? And chances are in your life, whether you're a man or you're a woman, you have been invalidated in your feelings when you grew up. Someone told you you shouldn't sing that way, you shouldn't feel that way, or this is bad to feel that way. But who are they to say that? Because your experience is always valid. So it's very important as men and as women to create that safe space that we can bound and connect more with each other, right? And maybe th there is a one tool that I'm thinking about that I want to share with you, if, if you're okay, George. Yeah, about, great. Go because, ahead. Because I talk about uh, resist. I, I talk about triggers and resistances, right? Mm -hmm. So there is one way you can know when you are in resistance. So here's the tool. Think about something that few people have said to you about you, same thing, you know, few, few different people told you something about you that you don't like, that you don't want to hear. And once you have that example in mind, just get back with that feeling. What is the feeling in your body? Is it something like it's, for example, for me, when something happened like that, I feel like I'm, I'm feeling tense, my chest will be tight, and I'm gonna have maybe something in my throat, like it's ex excruciating in the moment to talk about that. That's my experience, that's my resistance. So whenever I get to that point and I feel that coming, I know that I am in resistance. So if I know that I am in resistance, what can I do about that? I can just say, hey, Eric, be honest with yourself right now. And what's the truth behind that resistance? Because if I don't like something that few people have to say about me, it's because there is a truth behind that. And maybe as I reflect on that, and as I sit with, with myself, trying to answer those questions, at some point, I will get some insight like immediately. And the more you practice, the more you get answers. And suddenly you say, oh my God, I know where is that coming from? I remember a time in my life where I was, I was feeling exactly the same. And then you, you, you start, knowing where is the where is that coming from so you can do something about it and and you can recognize that you have been wounded at some point and that that there's a need for healing in that so then healing that is is, a, is another job it's like what i call the, the the shadow work the shadow work is whenever you have a resistance instead of letting the resistance go away and step away and say hey okay being in denial what i call being in denial and say, I will deal with that later? No, you do it now. It's a 24 seven work. So some people are gonna get afraid about what I'm saying right now, but it is, it is a 24 seven because here's what's happening. If you don't address the resistance in the moment or at night, right? The resistance is gonna start to build up. And on a scale from zero to 10, you don't wanna solve problem when you are at a 10 because it's already too late. You want to solve the problem when you are at a two or a three, especially when you are in your relationship with a partner. So it's really important that we can get that idea and we can say, okay, if there is a problem, let's talk about it. Especially for men, women are more inclined to talk about it, but men, we are not inclined because we don't want to feel vulnerable because we think it's, we feel weak if we are too vulnerable with our, with, uh, with our partners. You mm. know what I mean? Does yeah. it make sense yeah. to you? Totally. Yeah, this is good. Yes. And so if somebody is you know, watching this or listening to this and say, well, Eric, how do you work with clients on, on these things? Um, and by the way, you do one-on-one -on -one work with clients and you also have upcoming, you will have online workshops as well. Um, <laughs> the way I think about it is, okay, if, if you're, if your problem is at a, you know, one, two, three, or four level, maybe you could take the online workshop and maybe help yourself. Yeah. But if your problem is five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, you need to work with Eric, you know, <laughs> personally. But, but can you give an example of, of what it's like to work with you? 
Yeah, absolutely. The thing is, here's one of the things that I do and one, one of my skills is to hold space for people, okay? Because as I said before, chances that you have been invalidated, whether it's your partner or whether it's someone in your life, and you don't feel hurt, you don't feel acknowledged for how you feel. And you get to a point where you feel, where you feel, well, what's wrong with me? What am, why am I feeling that way? And why am I recreating the same experience over and over again? So one of the things that I do and that I'm very good at is holding a space for people that they can be able to express themselves without feeling being judged. And as I reflect back with them from what I see about them and from what I see how they, they handle life and how they handle conflicts, right? They start to feel acknowledged for how they feel. And, and they start to feel that they are, there is someone in their corner. So it's part like we, we are a team, right? And what I'm really good at, one of my, uh, my biggest skills is to very quickly, when I, when I get to work with a client, is to know exactly where they need to focus their attention to make some changes. And you always, there is a, there's always a starting point where you need to make some changes. And sometimes the changes are very small, but it's gonna have a huge impact. And, and whenever I do that for people, I can see transformation. I can see people like open up and people start to talk about things that they never talked about. So they are okay to be vulnerable with me right? Uh, because I'm not here to judge them. I'm just here to validate how they feel and then to find other solutions that they can help or that they can, they can get the, the right support, that they can do something about it. Then they can know where is that coming from and what do I do now? So it's, it's also really how I started this interview. It's really about creating awareness yeah. because yeah. when you create this, when you have this awareness, then you have a choice. I can make new choices in my life. And when I start to make new choices in my life, I open a realm of new possibilities. So sometimes I want, I want to tell people, sometimes you feel stuck and you feel really, wow, why am I recreating the same experience over and over again? You know, in relationship, that's what we do until we get to a point and there is a breakthrough about that. So don't get scared about that. It's just, you're just one step away to find how you can be, how you can create that awareness and how you can start to make new choices because that, mm. that is all about. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Eric. I really appreciate this conversation and I hope uh, people watching this felt encouraged and felt more um, some awareness going forward today about how we can use the relationships, use every situation to really become better people and more loving people. Um, yeah, I, I just want to add something uh, to, yeah. to just to wrap up is when you do that kind of work, whether you stay with your partner, whether you want to, to split away, it doesn't matter. Mm. You do it. This is something that you gain for your own life. This is something that you gain to strengthen the relationship you have with yourself. Yeah. And the more you feel strong with yourself, the more you will attract better situation in your life. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, and I want to take this opportunity also to say that each month I'm offering complimentary session. So if you feel stuck in any kind of relationship right now, whether it's partner or at work or something, mm -hmm. just reach out to me. There is no obligation, but in one hour I can change your perspective and I can show you how to make new choices and create the awareness that you need. And that's what I love to do is being of service. Awesome. Awesome. The website, your website is ericbensusson.com. So that's a e -R, uh, e r i c Eric Ben Susan is b e n s o u s s a n dot com. You're also on Facebook and Instagram, and the um, the uh, the username there is Healing Relationships Now, all one word. Healing Relationships Now. You can find Eric on Instagram and Facebook. So Eric, thank you so much. I'll put the links in the notes so people can just click on it. And uh, thanks for the work that you do. Thank you very much, George. Thank you. Thanks.